Hi, my name is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech, and in this video I'm going to do an example of using block diagram reduction techniques to get a closed loop transfer function. I'm also going to show you a little bit about how to use the feedback command in MATLAB to help uh, simplify transfer functions that have all kinds of crazy numbers in them. Okay, so let's start with this example. This is the only example. Um, that I'm going to do in this video for block diagram reduction. And it covers a lot of the bases um, uh, of block diagram reduction. So let's do it. So let's take a quick look at it first. We, we have an output signal Y and input signal R and a, a host of various transfer functions floating around in it. G1, G2, G3, and H are all transfer functions. In general, uh, rational functions with polynomials of s in the numerator and denominator. Well, let's let's uh, make our first move. So the first thing we'll do is we'll take that summing junction that has three things, three signals stuck into it, and we'll break it up into two. By doing that, we have a pretty good chance of isolating this into the canonical feedback form. And just as a quick review of that, I'll do that over here if we have g and h you know in some sense when you're doing black diagram reduction you're almost always hunting for getting your system down into this form almost always not every time and then this closed loop transfer function is 1 plus g over 1 plus gh this is a plus and this is a minus. If this sign were a plus, then this sign would be a minus. Okay, so let's go ahead and break up that uh, little porcupine that we have here. And I'm going to have to start redrawing this over and over and over again. So, just bite the bullet and do it. So we have this, we have a G1. And I'm just going to break this up into two things. I'll put my G2 here. Boom. This comes back with the unity feedback. There's my Y, there's my R, and I have this pickoff point with a G3 in it. That goes here, plus plus, and then I have this coming through with an H in it. Beautiful. Okay. Now I can see that I have this canonical feedback form where the H I had in this example is actually just equal to 1 because this signal can be thought of as having a block in it that just has 1 in it. It's kind of boring. Okay. So that will be our first simplification, and I'm already out of room on this tablet, so I'm going to just scoot this down a little bit, and guess what? I'm going to redraw it. I'm going to redraw it, but simplifying this away. And I should write that out. What I am going to simplify it with is g2 over 1 plus g2. Okay, let's do it. That going into G1. Here's our nice big block, G2 over 1 plus G2. And this unity feedback, plump, plump, plump. And then we have this going into there. Boom, boom. And we sneak a G3 up into, whoops, and I can see I actually drew an extra unity feedback, but that's easily removed. That was the whole point of simplifying this piece away. Okay, so we have that, and now what shall we do? How about if we take this summing junction and move it over to there? If we flip it to the front side of that G1 block, then we can um, have several quantities summed together that we can we can simplify. So let's do that. I'm going to scoot that down. Okay. So if I flip that in front, 
So let's start drawing this out. We'll have our summing junction here. And we're going to flip this summing junction to the front side of this block. So I'm just going to put that in. And I'll move my G1. And this is G2 over 1 plus G2. And we have our H that will come all the way back to the front. And now for the interesting part. So I used to have a G3 up here, but because I flipped the summing junction to the front side of G3, I now need to have a G3 in the denominator here. Beautiful. And let's make sure I get all my plus signs properly deployed. Great. So I'm going to do one more uh, summing junction flip, but this one's really quite easy. I'm just going to take these two and interchange them. It really doesn't matter which order we sum those up in, but if I redraw it yet again, um, it will look a little bit more uh, simplifiable, if that's a word. G2 over 1 plus G2. Here's my H. And let's see, I'm going to bring that into here. This is my big move, plus minus. And I'm going to take this, sneak in my G3 over G1. It's a little bit. There we go. Here's R and Y. Great. So now this makes it very clear to see that what I can do here is just add up those two signals. And when I say those two signals, I don't want to forget about this one, which, again, you can think of as having a block in it right here with a 1 in it. So let me just move down a little bit and start making that simplification. So we have an R1. That's that little line I was just talking about, G3 over G1. And then here, well, let's see. If I look at this, I can see that I have G1, G2 all over 1 plus G2 in the forward path. And then I also have this H down here in the feedback path. So again, I have this canonical feedback form. So I can make a very large block, and um, in it, I will put everything in that forward path, g1, g2 over 1 plus g2, divided by 1 plus, plus because I have a minus there, g2h, uh, with a g1 also, um, 1 plus g2. And I am just about done. Don't forget this r. And actually, I'm going to do one more thing before I finish this off, and that is I'm going to go ahead and get common denominators in each one of these blocks. That will help me to simplify things a little bit. Whoops. G1 plus G3 over G1. And here in our big block, if I multiply the top and bottom, the numerator and denominator, by 1 plus G2, I get a G1, G2, 1 plus G2 plus G1, G2, H. And knowing that these two blocks combine in series, I can see that this G1 cancels with that G1. So finally, Y over R, I can just write down, is G2, G1 plus G3 over 1 plus G2 plus G1 G2H. Bingo! I've got the closed loop transfer function. Okay, so we're done with that example. And now what I want to do is show you how to use the feedback command in MATLAB to help you simplify block diagrams. Okay, so let's consider this example where we have a canonical feedback form, but we have a little bit of complexity to it. 
So you went through, imagine that you went through a whole block diagram reduction process and you got down to this. And to make matters even a little bit more interesting, let's say that you actually had the various transfer functions. So here's G1, uh, here's G2, 7 over S squared plus 5S plus 13 and you had an h1 equals 10 over s plus 1 and an h2 that was 3s minus 1 over how about s squared plus 4 and now what you have to do is come up with y over r now you can write down y over r without too much trouble now y over r would be g1 g2 over 1 plus all four of those multiplied together h1 h2 okay so that's our closed loop transfer function now if you then had to substitute all this stuff into here and get through all the algebra so that you could write y over r as a single rational function with a polynomial in s in the numerator and a polynomial in s in the denominator it would be a lot of not a huge amount of work but a decent amount you might make some mistakes so MATLAB will do that for you. So let's go ahead and make it do the work. Okay, so here I have MATLAB open, and I'm going to first uh, code in those four transfer functions. So we had G1 is equal. I'll use the, the TF command, which makes a transfer function object. And so for the numerator of G1, we had uh, 3 times 1, 0. And the denominator was 1, 1, 2. And I'll leave off that semicolon just so we can see it. Yep, that looks about right. And G2 is equal to uh, 7. Whoops, it wants to give me suggestions, but I really don't want to hear its suggestions. So we'll do that. And I used the uh, semicolon that way just to turn off some of the, the noise. Uh, 10 there we have that. H2 is equal to TF. Let's see, we had 3 times 1 minus 1 and a 1, 0, 4. Let's take a look at that one. So that looks about right. We can just review all of these. G1, G2, that looks right. H1 and H2. Very good. Now let's just take a quick peek at the feedback command. And it can do a lot of things. We can also see that it has some other commands, even before we get to looking at what feedback does, series and connect and parallel. But you can imagine what those can do. And we'll actually use series in just a second. So here's what feedback does. You can see a, a little pictorial of it here. Here's the input U. There's our forward path with some transfer function M1 in it. And here's the output. In the feedback path, we have M2. In general, um, we can use either positive or negative feedback by indicating this is a positive or minus sign. So we just use feedback, forward path, uh, feedback path, and then give the sign. Now in our case we actually had series combinations of G1 and G2. So let's go ahead and make those. Our M1 is equal to series G1, G2. Boom. And M2, the feedback component was equal to series H1, H2. Great. And for our closed loop transfer function, I'll call it YR, is equal to feedback M1, M2, and minus 1 because we had negative feedback. And there it is. So much easier than doing all that by hand. There's a lot of little uh, tricks within MATLAB for manipulating block diagrams, and you can work your way through those by looking at the help on the feedback command and then following some of the threads that are linked to it, such as series and parallel, etc. All right, so we did an example that exercised lots of different block diagram reduction strategies, and then also looked at very briefly how MATLAB might be able to make your life a little easier. So again, my name's Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech, and thanks for watching.